Welcome. Let's play with the concepts of sine and cosine and discover, which my students once called a few years ago, quine and cosquine. Um, before we get started, uh, let's talk about sine and cosine first. And uh, we'll go back to very first principles. And in a trigonometry course, if it's done properly, you realize that trigonometry is not quite the right word for this material. It should be circulometry, because it's all based about the location of a star moving about the heavens on a circle. So early astronomers are very interested in imagine this is a star. All you could do is look up at the star at some angle x, and people were very, very much wondering, could I work out the height of the star? And through a long, tangled tale of history, the word sine involved. It's actually a wonderful tale. It's mistranslations, also wonderful things. So you can read the tale in volume three of this book about how sine got its name and how it's a wonderful misname. But in any case, the height of a star at an angle x is called sine of x. And after a while, people became interested in the companion length to this, which would be how far over is the star, and they call that cosine of x. So just for fun, um, if I told you my star is at 90 degrees, it would be directly above me. So the sine of uh, 90 degrees would be the height of the star when it's directly above me. But you'll notice already one problem. I haven't told you what the radius of the circle is. And obviously that height's going to depend on what radius we're dealing with. So what people did is they just said, OK, just to get the mathematics going, let's use the simplest radius possible. Let's use a radius of 1. So this would be the length 1. And in particular, the star is at 90 degrees directly above me. The height of that star would be 1. Sine of 90 degrees is 1. Cosine of 90 degrees is how far to the left or right is the star from me. My overness, that's none. There is no overness directly above me. And so on. You work out sine of 180 degrees would be, where's the star at 180 degrees? Well, it would be over here. Do, 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 do. has a height of 0. And its overness, well, it's over one unit in the negative direction. I call that negative 1. And so on. So what people do, and I'm assuming you're already familiar with this, is they say, OK, I'd like to graph the sine function, please. Whoops, what am I doing? Cancel that. Um, let me draw some axes. For starters, let's draw graph y equals sine of x. Well, at various angles, 180, uh, 270, 360, and also go the negative direction, negative 90, negative 180, and so on. Uh, let's graph this thing at 0. My star has height 0. At 45 degrees, it has height, we can work it out, 1 over root 2, which is about 0.7. At 90 degrees, it's height 1. And then it comes, starts coming down again. And we've all done this in our lives. You'll find it makes this lovely uh, wavy pattern here. And if you go in the negative direction, it's the same. At negative 90 degrees, the height of my star is negative 1. All right, and the cosine graph, if you plot the overness, I'll do this in green, it, it, it appears as follows. So we've seen at 90 degrees, my star has zero overness, and so on. So these are the standard sine and cosine graphs. But mathematicians like to play, and I'm a mathematician, and I love to play too. And I like to teach my kids to play as well. What if stars didn't go in a circular motion? What if they went in a square motion instead? So let's do exactly the same thing. Let me draw my axes first. And suppose the mo motion of a star is given by a square of radius 1. Well, what do I mean by that? I mean the half the side length of the square is 1. So at different angles x, let me draw something in green, x, my star would certainly have a height, which I'll still, still call x, but I'll call it the squine of x. So if the square sine, and this overness would be the square cosine, which we'll call that cosine of x. So what I'd love to do is plot a graph of y equals squine of x. What does that look like? Why are we doing this? No reason other than for fun. All right, let's start by drawing some axes. Uh, let's do 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, 360. After we go the full 360, we'll be back repeating ourselves. And we go in the negative direction as well. Negative 90 degrees, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360. All right. Here goes. At uh, height 0, my star is height 0. At the uh, next easy angle would be actually 45 degrees. My star would be height 1. And actually, from 45 degrees all the way up to 90, my star stays at height 1. And if I go from 90 degrees up to 135 degrees, the height of that star stays 1. And then the height goes down from 135. Um, 135 degrees to 180, and at 180 it's height 0. 
And so I go beyond 180 to 225. It goes down to a height of negative 1. And then the height of that star stays negative 1 for quite a while, for next bunch of 45 to second bunch of 45, all the way up to 315 degrees. And then the height of the star climbs back up to 0. Now I've left out some details. What is going on in this region? Well, that's going to take some care. Um, at 45 degrees, we're height 1, and we're actually climbing up to it. I'm going to leave this little exercise. It could be a linear fit straight up. Maybe it's bulging concave downwards or concave upwards. But with some time, patience and time, you can plot some points and find it actually looks like this. And in fact, you'll find you're doing the same mathematics in this region, basically the same mathematics over here, and you get these strange S-shaped curves. So this is what the graph of cosquine of, squine of x looks like. Whew. But you can see the same sort of periodic wave feature, but it's sort of flattened out at the top. If you have the patience, in fact, if you just want to just logically deduce it, since the cosquine graph is just looking for the overness, which is the same picture rotated 90 degrees, it basically has to be the same picture as this, shifted by 90 degrees. So cosquine of x is a graph that looks like the same features as follows. Ooh. and so on. So I'm getting a bit messy there. All right, there's your squine and cosquine. But I do have a little challenge for you. What if I defined tank of x to be squine of x over cosquine of x? Could you draw me a graph of tank x? That is going to be an interesting challenge. Actually, I should have a second challenge as well. I can't resist it. I drew a square with horizontal and vertical sides. What about another version of squine x? What if this was, say, the, um, maybe some people might want to call it the diamond x? What if I did a squine and cosquine for this shape? So I'm looking for the height of the stars that moves about this diamond shape. Hmm, interesting. Anyhow, lots of fun to be had. You can venture other types of sine and cosine. If you're a teacher, I actually find this is very, very fun to do with kids and actually cements the idea of what sine and cosine are in the first place as positions and points on a circle. Playing with the, uh, strange versions of things can actually cement these standard ideas. All right, that's all I have to say for now. Thanks very much.